Hello, Guru Nation. Welcome to another episode of uh, Random Musings from the Clinical Trials Guru. It might be episode 228. Not sure, but uh, I'll take a stab at it. Um, episode 228, or at least something close to that. And this will also go on YouTube. This will go on Facebook. This will go on LinkedIn. Everywhere. We're, we're broadcasting everywhere, Michael. Today we have Michael Rissi. Did I pronounce that right? Yes, sir. Okay, thank God. Michael Rissi, you are a uh, coordinator, right? Yes. And are you a brand new coordinator? I'm a brand new clinical research coordinator. Just started. Wow. Okay, so let's do an introduction. Like, can you introduce yourself, who you are, uh, why you got interested in research, and then the million dollar question michael which a lot of people watching or, or listening are going to want answers for is how did you get your first position so if that's not too much let's start with that sure i'll, I'll try to remember those segments as we go here okay. and you can ask me to keep going on any if needed i'll remember uh, my name uh my, my name is michael rissi a clinical research coordinator for a major healthcare system in arizona Although I live in Colorado, uh, I recently just got this job a couple weeks ago after a pretty long search period. Uh, I had found out about clinical research pretty much just because of the clinicaltrialsguru.com, uh, watching, watching the videos, uh, doing some reading about the subject and the market. But I found that um, I, I had a grad school program that I was was completing alongside my job search in this last year. Okay. And I had, you know, public health was the program. And public health covers a lot of things, uh, but one of those things is, is it talks about clinical research uh, from at a population level to a patient, patient level. Um, it's a kind of a broad program that gives you just a, a bunch of tools to go in several different directions. Now you were doing, you were doing a master, you were doing a master's of public health? That is correct, yes. Okay, and they teach you this in there. They teach you about they, research. They teach a little bit of research. It is it's not it's not as robust of a research program in and of itself as I think you might find in others, except uh, that the the MPH is recognized in the medical community as being a research degree uh, because it teaches data analysis. Uh, so so that's that's the research portion that a lot of people see valuable. And so I, I wanted that, but I also wanted a job that um, that that I could start with, and I, I, I wanted to use my MPH to get into clinical research. But uh, an obstacle that I was finding a lot was that people wanted wanted a lot of experience, or they wanted a nursing degree. I saw a lot of that, uh, and, and it just kind of brings you around to the catch twenty two of of how do you how do you get into something if, that you've never done before? And yeah. Um, it's the, it's the industry's biggest problem, not only for patients, because this is the, this exact same issue or dilemma is happening with the need for study participants and the lack of awareness. And then this ex, it's the exact same problem with getting more people interested in 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 working in the industry. Like we, the industry needs more people. We were talking off the air a little bit about how especially in a year like 2019, like most places are super short staffed, but rather than investing time and energy and resources into training new people, they just give their existing people more work and then they pay them a little more than they do in a, in a, in a normal year. That's the strategy, which is a short term solution if you can call it a solution, I don't even think it's a solution, but it's a, it's a short-term response at the expense of someone's quality of life, sanity, and obviously long-term results for the industry. But I want to go back a little further. So what made you in your Masters of Public Health coursework, like, what made you, because many people are, are masters of public health, but most are not interested in the clinical research aspect. So 
what made you interested in the clinical research? I think that I was interested in the clinical research because well, I, I don't want to. I don't want to say too much or be too broad or un, have, provide unnecessary information. I guess, but it, uh, the part of research that I was interested in was just about how uh, it, it contributes to generalizable knowledge. It, it allows one person uh, to to uh, participate in testing drugs, testing medical devices, uh, testing, in performing studies, creating studies. Uh, because I, epidemiology is a big subject in public health, and a lot of that has to do with um, just researching the populations, um, figuring out what's going on in groups. And uh, clinical research seemed like a good way to enter into that kind of a study to figure out, okay, like like how how can I be part of a solution to us to a problem in society? Like how how can how can my work mm-hmm. provide meaning around me? And I, I, I saw the a job of which that seems to apply to um, would just be you know service in the clinical aspect, uh, entering and uh, working with patients, telling them about um, a study that's going on through the hospital. Uh, whether it, it, the the study that I'm currently going to be working on, it's not a drug or medical device study, but it is something that's going to be building up a big database in which new new tri- uh, treatments and therapies will be conceived. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I just I like how there's there's a lot of there's creativity in clinical research. You you can make a study about uh, broadly speaking. I mean, you can make a study about anything you want to. If you, and then if you can get it approved by an IRB, yep. If you can get some government funding or CRO funding, then you're good to go. So it, it seems like there's a lot of creativity. Um, good. And a lot of a lot of finance too. I'm glad you, you have it. that. You know, like most people, you you're idealistic but don't lose that because most people in this industry once they work here for a couple of years they lose that and they become you know very short-sighted so it's good to keep that spirit alive um, and as you'll see as a study coordinator which we're going to get into now uh, you know you have to mix the practical with the ambitious right and so that is possible to do and you're right. One of the best things about this industry is it doesn't seem like it's an industry where you're allowed to be creative. And that's because 99% of people in this industry work as cogs in a wheel. But if you're one of those people who creates the wheel, you can be as creative as you want. I mean, this is how we get things like virtual trials. This is how we get things like risk-based monitoring, which is not even really that innovative, but for our industry it is. This is how you get progress in innovation. Uh, So very good, Michael. Let's get into your role as a study coordinator. First of all, what do you do? And then we'll get into how you got started there. Sure. Uh, At at this stage in the program, um, I'm going to be involved in in a site startup that is a part of the bigger project, but at a new location. So I, I was lucky enough when I applied, and they're, that that that's kind of why they didn't need somebody who had a lot of experience. They wanted to train us in the protocol that they already made. And um, if if we're successful, then they're going to conti- continue branching out and building up this project because it's so long. Uh, so they're they're training us on on recruiting and patient engagement. Um, they're they're treating. Uh, talking to us about just how to market and sell the program uh, because there's information out there already about it. Uh, We're going to be uh, just doing some of the lab stuff, collecting blood uh, and biometrics, uh, uh, biometric biosamples, and and just using technology with patients through the consenting. There's going to be some surveys that are involved. So so there's kind of a lot of things coming together in this one program. but it's really exciting for me because you know I'm a person without experience in this, uh, but I, I followed a lot of your advice, just trying to apply to pretty much anything that I could to do this. <laughs> and uh, it, it, but I, I didn't want to just I didn't want to start at the bottom necessarily because I, I'm I'm a guy that um, you know I've got student loans now and I also have a family. Mm. I have two children. Okay. And uh, so I was not able to approach the field, you know, just like thinking that anything would do. 
um, even even though I, I knew that that might have been the only way. Um, I really wanted to start kind of mid level, and right. to wait until that opportunity came, uh, you know, for the sake of, of just those responsibilities. And uh, if if we are successful, and I, I think that we will, they have a lot of a lot of faith in the program. It's doing really well in Arizona. Um, so they'll probably make me or one of my coworkers a site lead, and to become trainers in this project. And um, and and it's it's all uphill from there. So it is it's a really good place to be. And uh, you know, a lot of that's luck, but. I, I suppose, mm-hmm. um, but I also I waited for an opportunity like this um, okay. instead of just taking anything. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, the upward mobility in this industry. If you prove yourself, uh, I mean, there's it's almost like unlimited opportunities. What you can do, you can go from being a research assistant to a study coordinator in three to six months, depending on the type of site it is you know obviously in a university settings and i don't even know where you work but i'm assuming it's like one of these uh academic institutions right um it, it may be a little harder but there's also more positions available there and there's usually more of a budget to have you uh there's more of a structure i guess with the hr system in place to where if you really wanted to do something else within the the framework of clinical research, you could, uh, especially someone with a master's degree. So I think you're on the right track. Now, did you, how many places did you apply to before you got your first offer? And was this your first offer, this job? Uh, well, no, this, this job was not my first offer. Um, I, I applied to a lot of jobs. I... Not all of them were clinical research. I, I tried to apply to a few other things that came up um, when, I, when it wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. Um, but it, it, was, it was several hundred different positions. Several hundred, right? That seems several to be hundred, the, yeah. the number for research-naive people, regardless of education. Obviously, with a master's, you will have better chances once you get the yeah. interviews, right? Um, especially master's of public health. So I think you're perfect for a CRA with that with that degree. Once you get a master's, it doesn't matter what you, what your bachelor's was. If your master's is in some kind of healthcare-related field, that kind of supersedes your bachelor's. So your concern earlier about having a BA instead of a BS, it doesn't matter anymore because you have that master's of public health now. Well, that, I'm, I am encouraged by that and hope that that will pan out. Uh, a couple warnings, I guess, I could share with other people just through my, my journey this year and how hard it's been. I, I did not expect that I would need that kind of perseverance in a job search like this. Um, however, uh, you know, I the first two job interviews I had were for clinical research coordinator positions, and um, because they were the they, they came really really quickly after I started applying for things, and they were for a hospital, uh, very very different structure, but. I think I came in with a really bad attitude. Uh, I was I was a little cocky because I just had this new degree. Okay. I was asking, I was asking, yeah, I, I, that's the truth. And I was asking for a pretty high salary, kind of the up the upper end of what the education was was is worth. Right. And uh, I didn't realize at the time exactly how much competition there was for those jobs. Hmm. So they they passed over me easily. And then I I, I had many um, many subsequent interviews through the course of the year. Um, but they, they wanted to know exactly how much, uh, how much I knew about research, uh, about government policy like 45 CFR 46 or, or the other way around. Or, yeah. Uh, uh, if I could explain how IRBs worked, uh, the elements of a consent form, um, they, so they, they wanted asked to you know. those kind of things. Even though they yeah. knew that you were research naive, they still asked you these things. They, they asked a lot of questions. A, a lot of people wanted me to be really prepared. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, you know, I, I I came in with just with every job interview, just would come in with tons of information about the company, about the project that I knew that they would be working on, if any, uh, about research as a whole. I would just have pages of information, then it just kind of just ready for anything. Um, it, it, that it, I didn't start that way, like I said, but just as the year went on, I just tried to get smarter about the applicant process to beat competition. And then sometimes the wages would be really, really low, and that I knew wouldn't support a family. Right. Um, 
So it, it really was kind of a waiting game until until this particular position and and you know maybe a couple others were competing with it. Good. So and what? How long was this process? Like when did you graduate? When did you get your master's? I got my master's in February of 2018. Okay. And I secured this position in like late November. Wow. So between February, so February 18, you started applying like to all these hundreds of places, right? And yes. when were your first interviews? You said you were a little cocky during the interviews. Was this right away that you had these interviews? Yes, I, I, I got a couple right away. Mm -hmm. And then and then after that, it was just kind of hit and miss. There'd be some weeks, there'd be several, and then other weeks, there'd be none. And I would have to kind of adjust, you know, just how much I was like shotgunning the internet with my applications because I really <laughs> wanted to stay in Colorado because it, it, you know, it's really moving is hard for anybody, but right. especially with family, it's for really a difficult. family. Just, yeah, it's tough. Yeah. And as the year went on, I started applying out of state to positions just because I thought it might be necessary. Mm -hmm. But uh, l luckily this particular one is really close to home. Well, your background and everything about you, like how you got started, how you learned this stuff on your own. Like they didn't really teach you these things in your master's program, I'm guessing. They didn't teach you what an informed consent was or what the elements of an IRB are, did they? I think those might have been the some of the only things that they talked about. Okay, so they did. It, or it, it was, they, there were a few a few uh, clinical research concepts like those that were taught. Uh, we had just, um, we had a, a course particularly useful called Study Methods talked about qualitative and quantitative studies like how to design a study hmm. um, but but it didn't talk about like submitting a drug request form to the FDA or about the patent process for a medical device and, and um, so, or like, about the legal like stuff. regulatory so, stuff for sites like 1572 yeah, not, and all that stuff none of that's like that's that's the stuff I, I, I got from from just following your channel okay so it's it 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 really like, helpful that's the academic, and then there's the practical, like day to day things you'll you'll have to use in the real world, which is 1572s, GCP, uh, financial disclosure forms, recruitment, patient recruitment. I mean, that's what you're being trained on now, right? Patient recruitment. Yes, all the practical stuff. So, where you currently work for a study coordinator, are one of your job responsibilities is patient recruitment. Yes. Uh, although I, I was a little nervous about recruitment because um, I, I don't know, like any 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 position or work that that requires an element of entrepreneurship or sales. I mean, that's definitely not a natural gift of mine. Right. Versus some of the other like administrative work. Um, but I guess I have a better picture now about just how important that is for research. I mean, like you can't have a study unless you have people, and you can't have people unless you talk to them. Uh, yeah. So, so, that's that's going to be a huge part. I mean, like this, like this this study, they really want lots and lots of people. It's not going to be just like a small sample. It's mm -hmm. that they, they want like hundreds of thousands to, to get involved in, in, in some capacity. Is it just in in your state, just in Colorado? Uh, no, uh, Arizona is probably the biggest zone right now for recruitment. Okay, but uh, we're, we're just like we're going to be using the hospitals to talk to people. I see. Because that's that's just where they're going, and if just working out of those and kind of leveraging that patient base. And is there a sponsor of the study, or is it the hospital system itself that got a NIH grant or something? The NIH would be the sponsor for this one. Very good. Okay, so you're going to learn NIH studies. Uh, good. Very good. So. Uh, I guess I'm trying not to. I'm, not, I'm trying not to be too specific because I don't really know yeah, if it's yeah, allowed. No, so no, no, we don't want to give those away. I'm but the NIH that. funds thousands, hundreds of thousands of stuff a year, so you're not giving away too much, um, and we won't give away any more than that. Uh, one of the things. So, what is your official title now? What is the your official role? The official role is clinical research coordinator. Okay. But um, there's, I'm going to be working with two professional research assistants, mm -hmm. and like, like we're all being we're because we're all new. We all just got hired. We're being trained the same way. Okay. And then, and then if if I'm fortunate, then I'll get to keep the title and just move into a study lead position if if they see that that's fit. So this university or hospital system that you work for 
do they do or do you know if they do industry sponsored trials at all i think they do and maybe other departments like okay. cardiology for instance or okay. alzheimer's okay very um, good and like that that stuff would I, I like i'd like to move into that because yes. of that that's that's like really hardcore research um and I, I feel like when I become more experienced, I might be able to transition into that. Like I could understand maybe why um, like a real science, a heavy science institution, maybe you wouldn't want a guy like me fresh out of the bucket. Uh, but after gaining a little experience in yes. a project like this, I feel like it might be easier. My advice to you would be do what you're doing for the next year. And then, you know, January 2020, um, talk to somebody and you'll get a better feel of this organization how just how easy that is to go talk to somebody in hr or whatever they have about doing industry sponsored trials in the other departments um and if they're not open to that the good news is you now have a year of experience as a coordinator which means almost any place is going to hire you at least as a coordinator but what you're really going after is some CRA type of stuff. And you can even ask your current employer if you can be an in-house CRA for them. So, you know, maybe they'd want to keep you in that capacity. There's a lot of options you have, uh, but for right now, you just got to learn, learn the industry, learn the ins and outs, get very practical with what you're doing and then prepare for these kind of things. And who knows, maybe you're gonna love what you do and you're just gonna wanna keep doing that. Um, you don't know. And uh, uh, that's my advice to you. Uh, th that sounds like good advice, uh, thank you. Um, I guess like w when you start a new role like this, like it, it's hard not to get like overly excited and think about it. just, you know, just everything is like a stepping stone and that's not necessarily fair. Right. Uh, to a, to a new employer, especially because of the opportunity and the trust that they give you. Um, but it's still while being like, but we still have to keep our goals and we have to be progressive and to think about, you know, the, what, what our, what our plans and future is. Um, because, you know, as the industry changes, we have to continue to try to th keep up and to become continually valuable, at least in some, some regard. That's right. That's right. So what, what have you done so far? Just to, have you just been doing training the, for the last two months? Yeah, it's, it's just been really super training hectic. And I, I'm grateful that like, that they've been putting the resources and the time into us to do that. Yeah, Most places I, don't I, do that. Most places will just throw you into the fire and that's it. That, that I, I through a lot of job descriptions I've read. I noticed that that, that is what a lot of people expected. They, they wanted to, you know, CRCs with one or two years of experience who could pretty much hit the ground running, <laughs> maybe juggle like two or three or four protocols at a time. Right. Um, have a you know a couple certifications under their belts, and, and and like I guess this particular position is different, where they just they don't want they don't want to let us do anything until we are totally, you know, totally trained, signed off on all these things, and they 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 just, they're going to watch us talk to people. They want to see how we talk to people, how we represent the program. Uh, it, it just you know a lot of hand holding, but I right now I, that's I appreciate. Good, that. yeah, soak it all in. I mean, you're a young you're a young guy. Um, this is just adding to your experience, like all of this stuff, and not only that, but it's gonna sort of help you better understand where you want to go because your plans could change. Maybe you don't want to be a CRA. One of my employees here uh, started as a research assistant. Now, just this month, became a study coordinator. He came in six months ago wanting to be a CRA, and now he doesn't want to be a CRA. So your your ambitions can change, and that's okay, because as you learn more, you have a clearer understanding of what it is that you like and what you don't like, whereas when you're starting and you're research naive, you think you know what you want, but then when you start doing it, you realize, eh, it's not really what I'm into. So uh, you're actually in a very good situation i'm very glad that you were able to find this position and um, i think a lot of people watching listening are going to be motivated now because many people they get frustrated they say you know i applied to places but i didn't get hired and i asked them how many places did you apply to and it's usually less than 10 and it's just i mean you heard it from michael here 
It's hundreds, hundreds, and he has a master's in public health. So, which most people uh, have less of an education than that who are watching or listening. So, um, any other last uh, words of wisdom? We'll have you on again. Uh, we'll do like more follow ups with you as you get into the coordinator role and get more comfortable with that. Uh, but any other words of advice? Well, if if I if I didn't emphasize it enough already, I just. I, I can't really sum it up any more than just perseverance um, because, you know, you never know what – every day the job market changes. There's new postings every day. If not in your town, and then in your state. If not in your state, then the state next door. Right. I mean, it just really just depends how bad you want something and how, how long you're willing to wait, how long you can wait, if you have responsibilities that can merit that. I mean, not everybody, not everybody wants to go back to school. I understand. Like, not not everybody wants to start at the bottom. I understand that, um, but I I believe that if you can, I, I yeah, I just I, obviously I've just practiced what word I preach here. I, I really wanted to be a researcher and to just to find a path into that, and it, it took me a lot of time and a lot of work, probably more than most people I think maybe would be willing to put in. Um, but for me, that was the only way to get it, and um, I, I think that there's there's an entry level job with a mid-level title that a lot of people can find if if they kind of stick with it long mm -hmm. enough mm -hmm. absolutely i think you hit hit it that's the sweet spot right there of course based on education but you're exactly right and for your case that was exactly the case uh have you had any have you been a part of any site selection visits yet or interacted with any cra's thus far Unfortunately, no. Um, I, I would like to meet some CRAs. Well, kinda, that's next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're going to set up our site next week. Um, we're going to have people come over with us and tell us where to put all the equipment where all the papers are going to go. And then wow. uh, and then we're, we're going to launch in February. So, so this is a brand I, new set. So the person you work for, which I don't even know, uh, they they're opening a brand new site like a community clinic or something of the sort, right? Well, uh, the, the, the clinic is an operation, but the study is not happening there yet. So they're going to uh, take I the see. clinic's resources to kind of house the study. Yeah. But no, I haven't. I, I'm, I, I'd like to meet a couple CRAs to, to kind of get their side of it, to see what their personalities are like, what their day-to-day -day is like. Uh, like that would be really, really valuable uh, because, sure. I, you know, after – after following following you and reading about other studies, like I kind of know what the job is like, but um, it would it'd be great to interact with them at least. Well, let me tell you, I did my first, well, not really my first, but one of my first real monitoring visits for an oncology study um, last week, and it's brutal. Like oncology is a completely different animal because uh, I can monitor, I mean, I, I can monitor studies, it's no problem, but oncology, I'm glad I'm doing it, and it's actually not my first experience, I have experience with oncology, but it just like, a lot of the stuff I forgot, so it's almost like I'm starting over, it is brutal, and it's, I'm, my site is a university, and there's a lot of challenges there as well, but it's, it's tough, so I can't imagine somebody going from like research naive to monitoring oncology which there are people like that like the people lie on their resumes and then they get hired and then they have no idea what to do like when they get there it's it's tough right but the pay is very good for oncology um but you 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 can naturally get that way and and where you are there's a lot of pros and cons to where you are which i kind of know approximately what kind of place you work for i don't know the specifics but there's a lot of pros and cons there there's a lot of departments you can do a lot of different indications over time uh, but the way you're doing it now is perfect just start out slowly get the training learn the recruitment learn the practical aspects you're going to learn how to build a clinic from the ground up which is very good there's going to be a lot of applications for your career later on by learning these things now so just keep it up. I'm very happy to hear that uh, you're able to get this position, and we'll do some follow-up interviews maybe every two or three months. Thank you. That, that would really be a privilege. Thank you, Michael. Stay on. We'll talk a little more off-air, and thank you, everyone, for listening and watching. See?
It's possible. Michael can do it. So can you. We'll catch you all later. Bye-bye.